if we put the right policies into place, if we can reverse course, you know, America could be the best emerging market in the world at some point. I mean, we could, you know, but we, but we have to make changes right now based on... Sergeant our, Leak at the moment, I don't think anyone... I, it really doesn't seem as though... It, I mean, it almost feels as though it's too late, even if, if America was yeah. willing to do anything. Yeah, well, America, see, America, we don't want to admit our mistakes, so we're just going to keep making them and making them bigger and bigger and bigger and keep compounding the mistake instead of acknowledging what we did wrong and trying to correct it by reversing course we can't admit that we just want to think that no we just need more spending we need more credit just print more money run bigger deficits as if we're not in as much tr enough trouble based on all the money we already printed and all the deficits we ran up but yeah it, it can't it, it doesn't even occur to anybody in this government that they're the problem that they're the reason we're in so much trouble and if they just do more of what they've been doing they're going to worsen the situation and at some point it's going to make it intolerable here at some point it's not just going to be you asking where should i go but young americans everywhere are going to be looking at where they can emigrate i mean how can they get out of this country how are they going to have an opportunity to prosper and they're going to have to leave remember our country was built on immigrants who left other countries because they saw more opportunity here and if, if things change and, and americans have no opportunity because the government has robbed it all uh, and and they see more opportunity in other countries they're going to go forget the politicians they're, they're, they're in the politicians are put there to give you the idea that you have freedom of choice you don't you have no choice you have owners they own you they own everything. They own all the important land. They own and control the corporations. They've long since bought and paid for the Senate, the Congress, the state houses, the city halls. They got the judges in their back pockets. And they own all the big media, media news, all the big media companies. So they control just about all of the news and information you get to hear. They got you by the balls. They, they spend billions of dollars every year lobbying, <laughs> lobbying to get what they want. Well, we know what they want. They want more for themselves and less for everybody else. But I'll tell you what they don't want. They don't want a population of citizens capable of critical thinking. They don't want well-informed, well-educated people capable of critical thinking. They're not interested in that. That doesn't help them. That's a Politics in America today is identical to pro wrestling. And what I mean by that is, in front of the cameras and the public, we all hate each other. I'm going to kick my opponent's butt, I'm going to whale him from here to high water and beat the crap out of him, yet behind the scenes we all have friends going out to dinner. Went to dinner together. And, and, and it's all a work. All intermarried. Show business. It's showbiz. And that's what you have today in politics. The Democrats and Republicans aren't really opposed to each other. Look, you know as well as I do that all of these politicians are self-serving most of them are looking out for themselves because you seem to be taking the side of the democrats when i'm telling you there's very little difference between them there's no difference between Kerry and bush on iraq there's no difference at all there's no difference between Kerry and bush on education spending on prescription drug spending there's no difference at all they're the same guy well there is less difference than a lot of us would like there's no I would agree difference with that. They're going to there be agreeing with each other on the debates. Two major things that I've talked about in my politics has been the debt, which you don't hear either the Democrats or Republicans even come close to talking about. Why? Because they're both equal offenders and it's indefensible. We're over $9 trillion in debt now. Well, no, if, I, I think, sorry, to be fair, I think the Democrats are talking about restoring a sense of balance in the, uh, in the country's finances, whether or not they're sincere is another question. Oh, but. no, they're not. Because number two on the list to restore our economy is get out of the war in Iraq. Well, if the Democrats are so for getting out of the war in Iraq, how come they haven't did it? They control both houses. You know what their response is? We can't override Bush's veto. Right, but the political... Wait, but, but, wait. They don't need to. They right. control the money. Yes, the, spend, the spending do, bills have been passed consistently by All they have to do is the stop Democrats. the money and you stop the war. But it's because they're on board. Remember when I told you about wrestling? And it shows me... Okay, but hang on, hang on. The political reality for the Democrats is, is whatever they say the reason is. 
they know they'll get beat up in the elections by the Republicans as unpatriotic pacifists who are weak on terrorism and are putting the country so, at risk. So in other words, they're making a political decision as opposed to what they really from their hearts believe? Be called politics, right? No, not in my world. In my world, you go with what you believe, whether it's popular or unpopular. You go with your values and where your heart is and the hell with the next election. You, you had mentioned that uh, you, you were afraid that you, that, um, you don't know if you'll be able to win. Uh, well, well, I think that uh, your honesty um, is a very valuable asset to you, and uh, as long as you just you just stand stand true to your word and your beliefs, and uh, you remain steadfast to them, I think there's no way that you could lose. Uh, well, you know. I mean, I wish I wish that were the case with respect to politics, because I don't yeah. think honest I don't think honesty is an asset in a politician. If anything, it's a liability. I think the most successful politicians are the most successful liars. I think people that tell the truth generally don't get elected, and if they do get elected, they don't stay in office. I think the people who stay in office and who are very successful, like a Chris Dodd, who's been in the Senate for five terms, I think they do that because they tell people what they want to hear, not right. what they need to hear. And, and, and so a lot of people don't want the truth. You know, there's a tendency to shoot the messenger. People want to believe in, in, in Santa Claus and they want to think that government can do all sorts of good things. So, you know, I, I think, you know, in my profession, I think in the, in the brokerage profession and in most professions, I think honesty is a good policy. I think in the long run, uh, you're going to do better uh, in the investment world if you're straightforward with your clients, if you're honest with your clients, than if you lie to them. But I think politicians... Is, politics is the one career where it seems that lying, the more you lie, the more successful you're going to be. Some of Chrysler's creditors, a couple, at least one, a state of, I think, Indiana, pension fund, you know, they objected to the bankruptcy in Chrysler because uh, they're secured creditors and they thought they could have got a better deal, but the assets could have been sold to a higher bidder than Fiat, which bid zero. And basically the Supreme Court threw it out. Supreme Court says, we don't care about your rights as creditors. We're going to decide based on political considerations. So we, you know, we no longer have a country of laws. It's a nation of men at this point. Men decide. The laws mean nothing. The Constitution means nothing. Due process means nothing. Uh, politics rule the day. It's whatever, it's whatever Barack Obama wants. That, that, that's the law. And, and here you have creditors uh, who had their rights set aside and where they would have been able to recover more money, now they get less. At the same time, you had a lot of creditors of AIG, of Bear Stearns, of Citi, of, of all, all these companies, where the government bailed them out completely. And if the government had stayed out of it, they would have taken bigger losses than Chrysler creditors. But, you know, the politicians are in here deciding which creditors get bailed out and which creditors get screwed. And this is not how a country should run. And one of the part of the decision making process, in my mind, is to see again if there is real support for my candidacy. If people who really believe in freedom and liberty and sound money and the Constitution, if they're prepared uh, to support that with an actual political contribution, if they're prepared to volunteer their services and work on his campaign. Uh, because I don't have the normal political connections that a lot of my opponents are going to have. And I'm not promising anything specific if I win other than freedom from government, other than going to government to put a stop to everything that they're doing and to try to restore sanity to an insane Congress, to try to be a roadblock. The senator who slipped a provision into the stimulus bill that ended up ensuring that AIG executives got their big money bailout bonuses got big bucks from AIG employees for his re-election campaign. Correspondent Shannon Bream reports on the fallout for the chairman of the Senate Banking Committee. You know, I'm not there to get re-elected, so they can't bribe me. Uh, they, they can't find a way to try to promise me something to, to quiet me down. They won't be able to control me. They, they, they'll never have seen a senator like me because I won't be like any other senator. I'm there to do a job and I'm there to leave. And, and I'm not going to be a politician. And is there support for that kind of candidate? 